coming up on this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society, we recap the new features of the Switch software update, or the last 30 seconds of it, at any rate. It's dangerous to go alone, so the Nintendo Cartridge Society goes with you. Welcome to Nintendo Cartridge Society. My name is Patrick Ellis, joined as always by my co-host, Mark Mitchell. We've got a good show for you today. We're going to be talking about the news from the week, including the Switch software update, some crummy mini games incoming from Capcom, and sure as you're born, a new, new 3DS. Uh, and then on Thursday, we're going to be coming back to celebrate zombie video games on Nintendo platforms in a little something we're calling Night of the Living Nintendo. Uh, but in the meantime, Mark, how are you? Doing great. Yeah. Yeah. How are you, Patrick? Um, I am good. Feeling a little on the like sleepyish side. I think it's we're gonna transition right into weather here because it's hot. It's so hot. And look, I know every week we talk about how hot it is. Practically, some weeks every we week. don't. I feel like your go-to is beautiful. No complaints. <laughs> <laughs> what what you mean deep down is I'm too hot. It's so hot. It's so hot. It's uh, it's like a hundred degrees here again. Yeah, for no I, reason. I you know when it was hot last week, I was like, this has got to be it, right? There'll be no more opportunities for horrible heat in Los Angeles. I was wrong. Here's a question for you. Thank you. Do you think that uh, this means we will have a warmer than normal winter? Yes. Or no. do you think it just means that we will have? A bitterly cold winter because nothing means anything anymore. Uh, well, okay. I will. I will say. I'm guessing it means we're gonna have a warm winter, but I would like to double down on the nothing means anything anymore. Um, oh yeah, I, I mean, think that's a safe bet. <laughs> our guest weather today. We're doing Casablanca, Morocco. Big ups to our listeners in Casablanca, Morocco. Big ups. Uh, looks like it's about 61 degrees, clear, sunny periodic clouds i'm so jealous uh yeah wow man that's nice i want that so bad yeah i want that casablanca life anyway big ups to you all listeners in casablanca mark uh we've got a little bit of a debug let's uh do the music to transition into that the music of course gives us a second to dry our tears before we come to debug. Uh, yeah, sure. Our are they, shameful tears. Yes, they, they are shameful. It's not that the news is sad that we are correcting, right? Right, that's right. So the first item on the debug is uh, Keymailer, the service that hooks up influencers with publishers that we took as a source that saying maybe the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy is coming to the Nintendo Switch. Uh, announced, put out a statement saying, nope, that was just listed by accident. Don't take that as any kind of news or announcement. Uh, game's not coming to the platform anytime soon. Well, good. We don't need like tr we don't need trash like Crash Bandicoot. We don't need Trash Bandicoot. <laughs> we don't need it. Um, big ups to all of our Trash Bandicoot fans. Big ups. Uh, and second, doubly big ups mm. to our Trash Bandicoot fans in Casablanca. Uh, you're talking crazy, Mark. Double big ups. <laughs> Enormous <The biggest>. ups. <laughs> Uh, and second, last week when we were talking about our video game blind spots, um. Mark had mentioned that uh, Mario and Luigi and the Mario and Luigi series and the Paper Mario series were developed by the same team. This is not true. This is, of course, not true. Uh, Alpha Dream is the studio that does the Mario and Luigi games and Intelligent Systems of Fire Emblem and Advance Wars fame did the Paper Mario games. So oh. that's our bad. Yeah, we ripped that bandaid off. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I guess apologies. I don't know why I'm having a hostile relationship <laughs> with the listeners this week. I'm. So sorry. Let's get into uh, what we've been playing this week. I finally started up Stardew Valley. Hey! I thought I was going to finish Golf Story before, but that didn't end up happening. Mm -hmm. And I like accidentally fell into Stardew Valley because I was like, all right, I'm just going to start it up. It's going to give it a good like 20 minutes or something. That 20 minutes turned into... I don't know, seven or eight hours. Oh, so like a bunch of 20 minutes is <laughs> like 24, 20 minutes. Yeah, like a lot of 20 minutes is. And, but, you know, I, what everybody else 
has been saying about this game where you start, it's not very well guided or directed as to what you're supposed to do. And I don't know if that's by design or if that's just an indie game thing, because I feel like Golf Story was the same way. Sure. I feel like a lot of indie games are kind of like this. And, but after a while, you just pick up the ropes and you kind of understand that it doesn't matter. Yeah. There's no fail state in this game. Right. So you can just, and I mean, that that is a little bit like in the spirit of stardew right that like you make your own priorities you decide like i want to be farming more i want to be mining i want to be you know trying pursuing relationships with people in town yeah and it's so addictive because the days don't last that long and uh so there's only a limited amount of time and or there's only a limited amount of time for you to do the things you want to do in a day and Mm -hmm. so it's kind of impossible to do everything Time and stamina, right? Like, you can eat food to, like, bump your stamina back up, but especially in the early go, I'm like, no, I want to sell that, right? Um, so, like, yeah, I've, I feel like there are a couple different constraints that make me end my days kind of on the early side. I've got a couple of questions for you that I don't know if even if you, if you know this or have run into it yet. Do you have to eat food? Like, does eating food affect how you perform? Like, if you don't eat food for a couple of days, does your energy not fill all the way when you sleep? Like what? Jeez, I don't think so. I mean, I I, I don't think you need to eat. Is is uh, what unless I was you want to fill your unless energy you want to fill your stamina gauge? Yeah. Uh, and so what about you? Do, do you have a pet? Did you get a pet in the game? Yeah, I've got a dog. Okay, yeah. so do I need to feed this dog? I don't think so. I don't, I don't think, think there's think anything so. way I've, to feed the dog. I've put water in the dog's bowl using the watering can, uh-huh. which is not what it's for, <laughs> but. The dog, like, runs over and, like, licks it up, but I, I don't know that he's getting anything out of it. Do I have a bowl for this dog? Yeah, it is outside the house. Oh, it's outside. Like, it, it's outside. Oh, and where like, it, like, hangs out? Yeah, he hangs out yeah. over there. I yeah. like that you can, get, can go over to the dog and uh, push, like, the action button to make yeah. a little heart appear. Yeah, it's nice. Um, all, <laughs> Honestly, the thing that kept me going, because all those eight hours were, like, in one play session, and the thing that kept me going was I finally figured out the gift giving system Uh, or more specifically i finally figured out what alex likes mm. alex is my stardew valley crush okay he's the jock guy he's the jock guy yeah the one that like uh, yeah okay he's like always hanging out outside his house and like yeah and he's like the football guy right? yes exactly Mm -hmm. hanging out outside of his house sometimes other times he's inside his room which i can't get into yet because we're not good enough friends right like lifting weights with his shirt off like swoon <laughs> swoon you gotta get there mark <laughs> you gotta get there <laughs> so anyways i finally i figured out like the gift giving system mm-hmm. um because at first i was like oh can i just give them anything and they like it but it turns out that is not the case no they have specific things that they like and, or, and like quests right and they're yeah. like things they like more than they don't like so i finally kind of figured that out so i was but i'd already given him two gifts for the oh, week. no so I was like, got to keep playing for at least one more until I get to a Sunday or Monday, however, wherever the week starts again, their yeah. weeks, so I can give them another gift. I, I feel like it is maybe too easy in that game to accidentally give someone a gift. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, Like I've accidentally given Pam a beer at that bar <laughs> like four times. She loves me. <laughs> uh, I've also just accidentally given people... Oh, like garbage. precious stones oh. <laughs> you know that because i went mining and then i uh-huh. was like walking and then i had it in my arms for some reason uh and you just push a button and it's theirs <laughs> yeah i did have to turn off the sound effects for your footsteps mm-hmm. because the sound when you are going through bushes or tall grass was dry it triggered something in me it was driving me crazy yeah, yeah. so i had to turn that all the way off seem to trigger some bug where there's staticky noise so i've heard about this a lot actually that there is um uh, on some settings on some systems like a, a little bit of a static that comes through yeah in, i'd in say more than a little bit it's mm. pretty persistent uh but it was less annoying to me than the <laughs> sound of the footsteps hey, man, so it's we, a good trade-off we can't control our triggers right we cannot control our triggers uh really i so i've been having a week this week similar to your last week and i've just not had a lot of time to play games the one thing I did do and did accomplish was uh, I've still been playing Super Mario Run, the Remix 10. Uh, Daisy is now one of my characters. I can use Daisy in Super Mario Run. Is there, what is her thing? D- double jump. 
Oh, that seems helpful. Yeah, it is. Uh, and then uh, is there any incentive to keep going past 30 other than to, like, get past where your friends are playing? Uh, I, th I think that's the only, like, there's no other character deeper in there. Um, and you can continue to unlock uh, the buildings for your kingdom as, as you play through that. Um, Sarah, so I'm in, I'm in like 31 right now, right? Like I've just passed getting Daisy and I've done just like a couple, uh, a couple little maps past that. Um, and so like my next goal would be like catch up with Sarah and she's at 44. So I don't know that that's ever going to happen. <laughs> it's so far away. Um, but again, very happy to have gone back to that game. Um, and yeah, I just, I, I like Super Mario Run. Only other thing I want to throw out here is I've played some more Golf Story this week. I ah, keep you did go back to it. Okay. Yeah, and I keep expecting for the game to almost be over because I thought I was pretty far in it, and it's only fifteen bucks. Mm -hmm. But man, it is a it's worth your fifteen dollars. It's a really fun game. It's really cute, and it's meaty. Like there's a lot going on. Like I thought I'd reached the end. It seems like I maybe just reached the halfway point. Yeah. Well. So. You know, Mario Odyssey comes out in a couple days, so we can throw all these games away. Mark, let's get into the new releases. So today, October 24th, there are some Switch eShop releases coming out. Knights of Azure 2, Bride of the New Moon, also known in my own head as Busty Anime Babes, mm -hmm. is released for Switch. On the Switch eShop is The Mummy Demastered. Which actually looks kind of cool, right? It's a it's by WayForward, I think. Yeah. And it is seems to be a licensed title for the summer's box office bomb, The Mummy, starring right. Tom Cruise. Right. But Almost certainly as The Mummy, right? He <laughs> dies in the movie and then comes back as a mummy, right? That's got to be how this movie works. Otherwise, why would Tom Cruise be in The If he's not The Mummy... I don't, I, mean, I don't want to blow your mind, but I don't think he is the mummy. I bet by the end of it, he is the mummy. <laughs> I don't think he's the titular mummy. Look, we would love to have... We haven't uh, asked people for spoilers for a movie we in a haven't. long time. So we Let's haven't. bring it back. We haven't seen The Mummy starring Tom Cruise. We will never see this movie. If someone could spoil it for us, please send those to Nintendo Cartridge Society at, at gmail.com. Um, but yeah, it's like a 2D, almost like Contra-esque platformer type thing is what I'm getting from it. Does that sound right yeah, to you? It's, and it seems kind of cool. So that comes out today. This is the Police comes out today. Night Terrors, Zombie Gold Rush, and Just Dance 2018. It should be noted that Just Dance 2018 will be coming out on Switch, Wii U, and Wii. I don't know if we've already talked about this, but Wii is... Wii, original OG Wii, continues to be like the best-selling platform for Just Dance titles. I mean, all of those like uh, grandmothers and grandfathers who bought a Wii and ha are obviously not continuing forward with their Nintendo platform purchases uh, need something to play. Yeah, there's like 100 million of them just <laughs> sitting around. That's probably right. I think that number's right. And then on October 27th, of course, the day has come. Super Mario Odyssey is released for the Switch. Woo! I am very excited for this game. Yeah, me too. Um, I went to Disneyland for the first time this weekend, um, and I started to like get excited about that, and I like got the bug for like being excited about something. Um, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, it, it, I think it's called a zest for life. And, <laughs> and our... I, I'm not familiar with this. <laughs> if you could explain it to me, that would really help. It was a totally new phenomenon to me. <laughs> um no but like uh you know being a little bit excited about like going to disney and like doing star wars stuff and then i was like oh man odyssey comes out in a week and i just like Argh. yeah i don't have to work friday and hey that is do going I. to be my day yes <laughs> um so yeah that's pretty much it super mario odyssey comes out friday the super mario amiibo series including the uh mario princess peach and bowser wedding outfits are you planning they on picking any of those up no but are you picking i've got them all they're, they're all sitting they look amazing at best buy they look great yeah. i couldn't be more excited for this game um are you planning on going to our store at nine o'clock on thursday night when so they they i guess this is sort of a news item then we're doing things all out of order. Um, some Best Buy stores oh, right, are yeah. opening early for uh, pre-orders at uh, midnight Eastern time, so 9 o'clock um, on the West Coast here. And you get a free poster. 
Um, and a coin, right? I think if you pre-ordered, you get a coin. Yeah, I did. Um, no, because I'm all digital, so at 9, oh, it'll be point. available for, for download. Good uh, point. So I will be doing that then. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, great. Well, let's, uh, let's get out of the new releases. Now it's time for a regular segment on our show. It's time for 433. In 1952, American composer John Cage wrote a piece called 433, wherein a performer or a group of performers didn't play their instruments for four minutes and 33 seconds. For the purposes of this show, our instruments are talking about Nintendo. So for the duration of one performance of 433, Mark and I will talk about something not at all Nintendo-related, thus fulfilling the contract of the piece. Mark, I think we've got a fun one today. Yeah, so in the spirit of Halloween, Ooh. we're going to pitch mm-hmm. a 90s teen slasher film. That's right. So this is whole cloth. We came up with this idea yesterday. I've not been thinking about it. Me either. I've not been storing up any ideas. Um, so 90s teen slasher. We're making one up. Okay. So uh, we start in college, right? Uh, college it's- or high school? I feel like people are kind of cool on college. They're like, mm, maybe that's controversial. Maybe someone's going to be you know, protesting a neo-Nazi speaker or something. We go to high school. It's just fun and games. Okay, great. It's high school. High school. Okay, great. It's the first day of school. It's Mm -hmm. autumn. You know, like, the sun is beginning to set a little earlier. Mm -hmm. The leaves are beginning to turn. Uh, Our protagonists are, I don't know, we'll say juniors? Sure, yes. They're they're juniors, and uh, the homecoming dance is is coming up. Yes, absolutely. People are nervous about about, uh, homecoming because... uh, Last year at homecoming, right? The homecoming king and queen were scalded by hot water, right? Yes. That was uh, you know, a pipe burst. A pipe a burst. A pipe burst. Uh, and it, it was a freak accident. Quotes, air quotes. Right. Freak, freak accident. accident. There was no investigation. Okay, so the students are a little bit on edge for normal like dance reasons, uh-huh. right? But also because but for murder reasons. For also for so they were scalded to death. Or at least that's what we're to believe. That's what we're to believe. Okay, we have to believe that the uh, king and queen were scalded to death. So uh, it's homecoming weekend, uh-huh. right? Uh, le- leaves are turning. Uh, something happens at the football game. Yes. Um, like a hole opens up in the field okay. and swallows yeah. the quarterback hole. Okay, so like a, a hole, just like a sinkhole? Yeah, like a sinkhole like opens up, yeah. Okay, and swallows the, the team quarterback whose name is Darius Rucker. He's uh-huh. named after Hootie from Hootie and the Blowfish. <laughs> uh, it's swallowed whole. Yeah. Uh, and then um, that's His when... His girlfriend... Mm-hmm. Jessica. Uh-huh. Uh, she, named after Jessica Rabbit. Of course. <laughs> but her, her last Rabbit. name is is uh, Leibowitz. Yes. But, <laughs> but she's named after when Jessica Rabbit. When she moves Rabbit. to Hollywood, she changes it to Rabbit. <laughs> right, of course. Uh, so she... She uh, it, like goes to the superintendent of the schools and is like, uh, "You need to investigate." Right, because none of the are... parents, all the parents, just like pretend that nothing happened. They're like, "What scalding? What the what the hole opened up in the earth? Too bad we couldn't score that last touchdown. They lost the game, too. Right? They yeah, could, of they course. played the game. They, they played, <laughs> they the, played game. the game. They continued to play just without the quarterback. Yeah, and uh, so Jessica, right, and her friends, her like plucky friends, her nerdy like uh, younger brother, uh huh, and like a. Uh, uh, a jock friend, right? Yeah, and there's yeah. like a larger kid. Right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> you mean like a fat kid? <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, right, so they, they all go to the superintendent's super... Yeah, I, the superintendent, yeah. they get yeah. shut down. Right. And so they're like, we're going to investigate this on their own. But when she returns home, <gasps> scrawled on her bedroom wall uh-huh. with a pipe uh-huh. is... What? Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> what do you mean with a pipe? Well, somebody like took a pipe and and like carved like, it into a mirror. Paint. Yes, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, 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 no. It's on a wall. Okay, all right. Good, it's good, like good. the paint got ruined. Okay, sure. Her mom's gonna be really upset. Of course, right? And she scratched into the wall. Uh, like, gotcha. Okay. Because this movie's called Gotcha. Okay, sure. So the, it's it's called Gotcha. <laughs> she it says Gotcha on on her wall, carved uh, into it with a pipe. Yeah. Um, and the pipe is still there. We'll say just to make it clear. Yeah, that, of like, course. It was done and with there's a pipe. maybe a little bit of steam coming out of it, and you're like, Ooh, what? Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Why? How would it still be hot? Was right. there water going through it until very recently? Um. So like the kids are they're they're freaked out, but they're like, well, only thing we can do. Right. Because the adults don't listen to us. Right. Is go to the dance and pretend everything's normal. <laughs> it's still high school. It's still high school. So uh, uh, Jessica's nerdy friend, who you know has like been hanging, he's like, 
you know, friend zone kind of guy. Uh, and he can have like a weird like, you know, men's rights activist like kind of. Yeah, he wears a fed- he wears a fedora for sure. Yeah, that's right. Um, so he's like, oh, this is my opportunity. Jessica's boyfriend has been swallowed by the earth. I'm gonna ask her to the dance. Yeah, and she's like, okay, I, ha- I guess we have to go together. Um, to you know, just finish. That, you know, this this will make the whole thing normal, uh-huh. right? And then it turns out, oh, we'll never know. Oh, we'll never know. Uh, we were accompanied today by Easy Aloha. Easy Aloha. Uh, Mark, let's move out of four thirty-three. Big news for the week is that later today, at Specifically at 8 p.m. Pacific time, there's going to be a Nintendo Direct focus on the Animal Crossing mobile game. My goodness. Yeah, remember, th- so this game was originally announced as coming out last fiscal year, which ended at the end of March. Mm-hmm, when and the Switch came out, basically. Yeah, yeah, and then it got delayed, and we haven't heard anything about it since. Some people were wondering if it got canceled or what the deal was, but we're going to learn all about it tonight. Um, are you excited about this? Not really. And I think part of that is that Fire Emblem, or so I like Super Mario Run, uh, Fire Emblem Heroes didn't really do anything for me. I guess the... Uh, but you're not really a Fire Emblem guy. Yeah, and I'm not really like a, um, uh, what do you call those, like gotcha yeah. type game. Yeah, just like the name of our movie. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. And, but I guess like kind of the nice thing about the this is just like with video with anything else any other sort of media you can be excited for one thing and not excited for another yeah absolutely so and i love animal crossing so it's possible that when all this is revealed it'll be something i'm looking forward to Mm -hmm. the idea of animal crossing on the go or bite-sized animal crossing is appealing to me in theory but if it's like one of those things where you pay money to try to get the furniture for your house right yeah like that's less exciting i just badly want this thing not to be me tomo yeah. Um, and like, you know, I also don't want it to be like a happy home designer, the um, kind of Animal Crossing offshoot that was like a uh, just like a furniture rearranging minigame almost. Um, and, you know, I've, I've got the uh, the Animal Crossing board game thing on the Wii U, which is like Amiibo Festival, which is like the least active board video board game you can play. So like there are a lot of bad forms of Animal Crossing. I just don't want this to be one of them. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, honestly, there's not a whole lot of use in us speculating too much because right. potentially by the time somebody listens to this, uh, it'll have already been revealed. Right. One thing I do think is interesting is that with Super Mario Run, we had kind of a long runway from announcement to launch. Mm-hmm. But with Fire Emblem Heroes, that was not the case. No, it was just a couple of weeks, right? Yeah, it was a really quick turnaround. And so it wouldn't surprise me at all if this game is announced tomorrow and out by Thanksgiving. Right. Or even, I mean, it could be a same day thing. I, I wouldn't really be surprised. Yeah, that's true. Nintendo's letting everybody know that there's not going to be any 3DS or Switch news. Which is good. Yes. I mean, it's Because good it's easy to get, like, your yeah. hopes up to for an Animal Crossing Switch. But while I'm sure it's coming, we won't hear anything about it later right. today. So while we're newly into the joy of living, uh, let's not get our hopes <laughs> up about this one. Nintendo also announced a new new 3DS XL. It's a mm-hmm. Super N- NES edition that's coming to North America on November 27th. So it's it looks like a Super NES. Yeah. Like, the, or I guess, like, the, what would you say? Like, the cover of it? The print? Like, the, like the top? The faceplate? Oh, yeah, sure. If it had faceplates, yeah. those faceplates would look like the, like, North American uh, Super Nintendo, yeah. It kind of reminded me of the uh, Game Boy Advance SP that I owned. Yeah. Was a NES uh, special edition. Mm-hmm. And so it w- had, like, the design and coloring of a North American Nintendo Entertainment System. And... Man, like, I wish I still had that because I would 100% buy this. Right. To go oh, with it. Oh, yeah, to be like the evolution of it and also the next. Yeah, that yeah. would be pretty perfect. Um, but, uh, this version also comes with a download code for Super Mario Kart, uh, the SNES game. Yeah, weird choice. I guess I get it. Do you? <laughs> I don't get it. The last, uh, there was a. Um, like the Yoshi Green uh, new 3DS XL 
came with a download code for Super Mario World. And I'm like, that makes sense. That's a that's a game that like, you know, there have been Mario games since, but like Mario World is sort of singular in that way. But like the original Mario Kart, like what? I don't know. For some reason, when I announced it, when it was announced, and when I you read announced it, it, when I announced it <laughs> yeah. just now, I was like, oh my! He- in my head, it just made total sense. Yeah, I was like, of course, it's going to be Super Mario Kart. It doesn't make why it, I don't I have no idea. It doesn't make any sense. It could be any other Super Nintendo game. One thing I will say. Oh, so one thing I will say is that, man, every single new new 3DS that has been announced mm-hmm. with these special editions. They're all really cool, they're, and I feel like yeah. I want the next one more than the last. You know, like each one yeah. is just like cooler and cooler. I mean, what do you know? He, here's the thing: there was that period, like about this time last year, where 3ds's were hard to come by, like legitimately hard to find, and part of that was Pokemon related. But like, you know, it's the more special editions of these things means that there are more of them out in the wild, and no one has to. I mean, it, how weird is it to be like, I can't find this like five-year-old Nintendo handheld um, and that they're kind of gradually getting rid of that. It is good news in that way. It's also just reminds me a lot of Nintendo's playbook from the, the DS era mm-hmm. where I think I ended up buying like five or six of those Jeez. because they just released so many special editions mm-hmm. that were like really cool looking. Yeah. And uh and like different upgrades and stuff. And so I ended up buying a lot of different systems. And I think with Nintendo introducing all these special limited edition mm-hmm. cool designs, it is to encourage people like me who have who bought a 3DS but bought it years ago. Yeah. It's like an incentive to buy a new one. And man, one of these days I feel like I'm gonna fall for it. Do but... you do you think this is going to be that time i don't think so i think only because even when samus returns came out anytime the a a 3ds game comes out that i want to play i you know like we'll buy it and i'll play it but i especially with the switch out the 3ds feels so archaic yeah it's just not it's hard to be excited about it yeah and so buying a new one just because it looks cool um doesn't it doesn't really make sense to me at this point i mean i think at, at this point i'm sort of in the like future proofing stage of my uh 3ds ownership where i know there are a ton of games on it that i'm going to want to keep and have access to forever you know um and so uh, you know i I recently purchased the um non-xl new 3ds the like mario um yeah maybe just like mario brothers um so i recently bought one of those uh and like that's going to be my like legacy console that's like going to be the one that i hang on to and you know we'll play those games in perpetuity but you know it's you know uh, other than that like yeah it feels weird to like buy new hardware for a platform that's you know rapidly disappearing yeah or at least feels that way who knows what nintendo has planned for next year uh yeah great point so a there was a big Switch system update last week. Mm-hmm. It brought the system firmware up to version 4.0. It was released on October 18th, and it included some pretty big features. Yes. Some features that uh, we'd been expecting, some that we were not expecting. I guess one of the big ones is it. you're able to now capture video using the share button, mm-hmm. or what do they call it? The capture the button, The capture button, yes. Yeah. Also, it should be uh, noted on, that capture is also what they're calling the mechanic of Mario throwing his hat and capturing things in, in Odyssey. He's not, like, taking them over. He's not possessing them. He's capturing them. <laughs> so it's just they're consistent with their language. So you can uh, now capture video using the capture button. The way it works is you, instead of just pressing it, you have to, like, press and hold it for a little bit. Yeah. And then it retroactively captures records the last 30 seconds of gameplay yeah and it takes it a little bit of time to do this like to to save the the data you can keep like playing the game while you're doing this but you can see like a little thing in the upper left hand corner saying saving and like a a little dial on it um so like it, it takes a sec for it to actually happen it's a it seems like a smart way in my mind it's a smart way to do it because you know like if something cool happens you want yeah. to be able to retroactively capture it. You won't know ahead of time that something cool is going to happen. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and uh, that you are able to um, edit 
the videos before posting them so you can trim them um, to whatever starting and ending point in the last 30 seconds you want. One thing that's a little weird to me, or I guess that was unexpected, is right now it is only possible in four games. Yeah. It seems like games have to be like updated to do this. Yeah, that is interesting because like the uh, obviously the screen capture feature can happen anywhere, right? And on any game. Um, but yeah, right now you can only grab video in Breath of the Wild, Mario Kart 8, Deluxe, Arms, and Splatoon. Too. And then on Friday when it is released, Mario Odyssey will include it as well. Mm-hmm. We'll support it as well. I'm sure it's just something where like there's a developer SDK or something like that. that yeah, sure. Uh, that de- developers will need to incorporate into their games going forward. And so that's why only select titles have it because something yeah. has to happen. There has to be some sort of upgrade. Yeah, it's just a bummer that like you know we'll probably never get that upgrade for like Sonic Mania or whatever. Right. Yeah. Um. But there are plans to include more games and a longer capture feature in the or capture time in the future. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, there were mm-hmm. also some new user icons from Super Mario Odyssey and Breath of the Wild. Have you updated your user icon? No, I, to... I'm still rocking KK Slider. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm using my Amiibo right now. Uh, I'm. I was thinking about changing it. The champions are in there. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, like, might want to use, like, Daruk or Ravali or someone cool. You can transfer user and save data between Switch systems now, Mm -hmm. which is pretty handy if you uh, got tempted into buying, like, the Super Mario Odyssey bundle Mm -hmm. or the, or I guess a second Switch for your house. Uh, Still no, like, cloud save feature. Right. It'll transfer it to another Switch and then delete it from the old one. Yeah, it's like the 3DS transfer feature, right? Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Uh, You can pre-purchase and and preload options are now available in the eShop, are now available in quotes because there are no games in the U.S. eShop that support it currently. What about um, Odyssey? No. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Hmm. it will be possible, but no game in the North American eShop does it yet but it's possible yes okay in japan you can preload um the snipper clips uh expansion yeah. mm-hmm. or like whatever i can't remember exactly what it's, it's like called. snipper clips plus yeah mm-hmm. so it is possible they just haven't really started rolling it out yet okay but that'll be really nice hopefully they start doing it here soon because stuff like skyrim doom you know like those like bigger mm-hmm. they're gonna be big downloads like, games yeah. it'll be nice to kind of Get those going. LA Noir. Early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, and eventually Xeno, uh, Xenoblade, right? Sure. Yeah. The, I don't know. Or, or, I don't know if I'm going to buy that. Oh no, I'm I'm saying that's a big game. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, there are like new channel updates. Uh, news channel got updated. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Software version matching. Uh, among switch systems in the same room. Yeah, so like if you're trying to connect to another Switch, it'll make sure that they're all operating on the same version of the software. Yeah, so because I think what this is super useful for is let's say uh, we are meeting up with friends to play Splatoon 2, but we are meeting up in the park where there's no Wi-Fi or anything. Right. And if By the we- way, we are always throwing down Splatoon 2 in the park. <laughs> we are always just showing up, being like, meet us in the park. <laughs> We're playing Splatoon 2. We, li- we live in... Uh, we live inside the Switch reveal. That's right. <laughs> uh, trailer. Um, but yeah, like since there's no Wi-Fi, if they didn't have the most up-to-date version, they wouldn't. It wouldn't be compatible. Mm-hmm. So this way, if I have the most up-to-date version, I can just share it to you guys. And because of course I would have the most up-to-date I version, that. and everybody, <laughs> right. I am the king. Um, and so that's actually a really cool feature that i don't know that we've seen implemented anywhere else i guess partly because you would nobody's logging their ps4s yeah. to the park mm-hmm. i mean i wonder if that's something that they noticed like in uh the pokemon community or something that like people wouldn't have their 3ds's updated all the way um and so people would be meeting each other to play against each other and not have the same I don't know if that would be a, a hang up for for that, but it could it, have been. It seems like it. I it seems like it would be for any game that features online battles. Right, right, right. And the reason that we wouldn't see that too much is that any game that would have online battles would mean you'd be connected to the internet in order to update your system software. Yes. But this is obviously a little bit different. Um, let's see what else was included. Oh, wireless USB headsets. So not Bluetooth headsets. No, but you can plug. 
a, I guess, USB receiver or whatever you'd call it, like dongle, uh-huh. um, into the Switch's USB port, mm-hmm. and then uh, use wireless headphones. USB wireless. It's right. a very specific it's thing. It's a very specific fix for something I don't know anyone <laughs> who uses that. Yeah. So. Um, and then, of course, other stability fixes. Um, but yeah, that's like some pretty exciting stuff. Nintendo just kind of dropped it on us. We didn't yeah. know that it was coming. There was no lead up to it. Yeah, all these all these little things and fixes all just like happen in you know drips and drabs, and eventually this thing will be full featured someday. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Well, yeah. We. I guess we don't know. With no word on if there's ever going to be a uh, virtual console. So. <laughs> A little bit of Pokemon news. Uh, Game Freak, the developers of the Pokemon series, have confirmed that Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon are the last Pokemon RPGs coming to 3DS. Seems intuitive. Still a good thing for us to celebrate, right? Yeah, I, I guess so. I mean, in the sense that I'm excited for a Pokemon Switch. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's that's what I... We were just saying that like we don't know what 2008 holds for Nintendo, right? Like, what their plans are regarding the 3DS. Or the Switch, really. Or the Switch, yeah. Um, but it's nice to know that the Pokemon company is like, we see what the future is, we're not going to drag our heels on uh, Pokemon like we do, like we have in all previous generations, you know? We're less than a year into um, the Switch's life cycle, and they're like, we're, we're heading for it, we're going for it. Additionally, they also mentioned that the the newer developers in Game Freak, uh, newer employees are the ones who are leading up Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Okay, and that the veterans were are all working on uh, Pokemon for Switch. Does that make you two part question? Does that make you less excited for uh, Ultra? I mean, what I think collectively our our excitement level for Ultra is pretty low, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think either of us are going to pick it up. Um, but like, it's weird they'd be like, "Oh yeah, don't worry, it's the B team working, <laughs> right?" <laughs> On Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. I don't know. For some reason, it's fitting to me that they're talking about this so openly. When, from my perspective, the buzz around Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon is pretty muted. Yeah. Or it's just like, man, even like. Game Freak can't even pretend to be super excited about it. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But also it makes it so, but it doesn't change my excitement level at all because it's already pretty non-existent. Right. I'm actually, I am interested to hear if anyone, if any of our fans uh, are excited about Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Um, and not like if you skipped out on Sun and Moon in the first place, I could understand that, right? But, like, if you played Sun and Moon and you're actually, like, actively interested in it, please write in to us and tell us why we're Nintendo Cartridge Society at, at gmail.com. Because, um, like, that's just not a headspace that I'm in at all. According to the market research firm NPD, the Super NES Classic Edition was the best-selling hardware in the U.S. in September, <laughs> outselling the Switch, PS4, and Xbox One. Well, there you go. I mean, I think it's uh, just a testament to the fact that Nintendo was able to ship a lot more of these than mm-hmm. they did the NES Classic Edition. Uh, the Switch did outsell the PS4 and Xbox One. I'm personally, I am going to guess that will be the case for October as well because I think Odyssey is going to be huge. Mm-hmm. And Switches seem much more freely available than they have ever been. Yeah. Like, they have have they are available on Amazon and have been pretty much all month, including pre-orders for the... Yeah, uh, for the Odyssey Mario special bundle. edition. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah, and that's all. Uh, that's all exciting. I, I think um, September is also maybe just like a weird month for hardware sales too. That like we're heading into the holiday season, but we're not quite there yet. Um, like I wonder if that just generally slows down as we go into like September or October. I'm sure it probably depends on the. Not to get too off topic, but it probably depends on the releases. Uh, mm-hmm. in the month because September is a pretty big month. You have NBA 2K18. You had Destiny 2. Um, but for games like or for consoles like the PS4 and the Xbox One, these are kind of legacy con. Not legacy as in last generation, but they are consoles that have a large user in base. Homes, yeah, yeah. So like, whereas Destiny One might have um spurred a lot of PS4 sales or Xbox One sales, Destiny Two probably isn't quite the same system seller because a lot of those people already own 
yeah. a PS4 and an Xbox right. One. Right. They're probably games that could have been considered system sellers if the systems weren't already sold. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, finally, Capcom has revealed a couple of original mini games to be included in the Switch versions of Resident Evil Revelations 1 and 2. Mark games why? that are not Mark, coming out why? for Halloween. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, this wh- is dumb. <laughs> These are they coming out in November sometime? Yeah, like middle of November or something like that. Just barely missing it. <laughs> like And going to get buried between like Doom yeah. and LA Noir and Skyrim mm-hmm. and Super Mario not to mention Super Mario Odyssey. Um man, I guess kind I don't know. We both like Resident Evil. Mm-hmm. Neither of us played these games, right? That's right. They're only forty dollars. I will probably be picking them up because I like Resident Evil. Yep. I like the Switch. As much as I hate to admit it, I want more Capcom games. I guess in theory, when's the last time? <laughs> when's the last time you wanted a Capcom game? Yeah. Ooh. Well, I'll tell you, the Disney After Noon Collection, which yes. I ended up buying on the PS4, have not really played because I, ju- I mostly just play my Switch. Yeah. And if I- it was on Switch... Th- th- that's insane. Like... Who's who's looking at the Capcom catalog and it was like a Disney Afternoon Collection? Nah, man, Resident Evil One and Two. That's what's going on Switch. I think Capcom is so mismanaged right yeah. now that uh, everything they're doing, like, it doesn't make any logical sense to me. Um, but they did have a lot of success with Street Fighter Two, whatever it was called, Ultra Street Fighter Ultra, Two. Ultra Street Fighter Two earlier in the Switch's life that included a. A uh, crummy mini mini game, where you're like, what was it like shooting For, first person mode where you're throwing hadoukens and stuff. Yeah, ugh, what a nightmare in, in the Street Fighter Four engine of all things. So like they're just advertising their laziness. Uh, I guess not laziness, but just like um, uh, their it's, lack it's, of caring. Yeah, it's it's poorly thought out and poorly executed. On top of that, so what what do we know about these uh, mini games? Okay, so in the first one in Resident Evil Revelations, players take on a game called a mini game called Ghost Ship Panic. Uh, this is a shooter in which you aim for a high score and earn uh, BP to use in raid mode. Uh, oh, let's pitch on that battle points. <laughs> battle points. I feel uh, good about that. Boo points. <laughs> yeah, appropriate for Resident Evil. Well-known ghost story. Um, All right. And then for Resident Evil Revelations 2, there's a game called Ghouls and... Uh, homunculi? Homunculi. The per- plural of homunculus. Oh, yeah. So it's a tribute to like uh, ghouls and ghosts, and I guess you're exploring a deadly island, and uh, you go for high score here and earn re- rewards for raid mode as well. Uh, here's, here's the, the twist on it that makes me at least, uh, marginally interested. You are playing as Barry Burton, the bumbling sidekick from the original Resident Evil, who is my favorite character in the Resident Evil franchise. He's the one that, when you're playing as Jill in Resident Evil 1, rescues you from the room where the ceiling is coming down, and he says, Oh, that was close. You were almost a Jill sandwich. <laughs> it's like the best cheesy Resident <laughs> Evil dialogue, and he delivers it with this like oblivious <laughs> enthusiasm. And I will say that these look to be uh, created with a little more care than the Street Fighter 2 mini game, in that the um, that like ghouls and ghost take kind of has that same sort of retro uh, pixel art yeah, design. So, so, you know, we like Mark said, we will probably end up picking these games up. Because we are suckers with a suckers. zest for life. Mm-hmm. All right, Mark, let's get out of the news. All right, that is going to do it for this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society. Uh, remember, if you enjoy the episode, please rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts. Um, and you can always share the episode on social media. We are at Nincart Society on Twitter, and we're on Facebook. The page is just Nintendo Cartridge Society. Um, if you had anything to add to our conversation, uh, you can always write to us at Nintendo Cartridge Society at gmail.com. Mark, Mark. Oh, at, no. At, at gmail.com. gmail.com. <laughs> That didn't happen. You didn't hear that. It didn't happen. Um, if you like Mark and Mind's opinions, we write about comic books on RatConPunch.com. Olivia Duncan made our logo. Our theme music is provided by Ape Betty. You can check out his music by going to ApeBetty.com or by listening right now. 
For my co-host, Mark Mitchell, this is Patrick Ellers figuring out that joy for life and saying thanks for listening.